Hello, everyone. Welcome. I'm so excited to see you all here at our presentation. Session uh, persistent pays off the path to session persistence in Gateway API. Um, I know it's been a long day, and I'm probably standing between you and your dinner. Um, so huge thank you for sticking with us at this presentation. Um, for those of you who might be new to this concept, um, session persistence is a way to ensure that a user's requests are consist consistently routed to the same backend throughout their interactions with a website or application. And this can be crucial for applications um, who, that needs to track the user preferences, the states, or even like shopping carts. And um, it was the top requested features for Gateway API at last year's KuCom at Chicago. So demonstrating that how important it is to this community. We are incredibly excited to um, share the latest updates um, on the session persistence and um, how this is going to be integrated into the Gateway API. My name is Gina Ye. Um, I'm software engineer at Google, uh, leading the design and implementation effort of session persistence in gRPC route and HTTP route. And today I'm presenting with Grant. Hey, uh, I'm Grant Spence. I'm a software engineer at Red Hat, and I've been kind of leading and championing the, uh, soft, uh, the session persistence gap uh, with Gateway API. So let's take a few minutes to talk about Kubernetes Gateway API before diving into session persistence. The Gateway API is a significant evolution um, in how we manage network traffic in Kubernetes environments. It offers a powerful set of features to address the demands of the modern microservices architectures. And the Gateway API designs several distinct roles for servicing different needs for different users. It also provides a standardized way to ensure that your configurations will work seamlessly across different Kubernetes environments and um, network infrastructure providers. The API gives a fine-tuned traffic with capabilities like header-based routing, um, weighted traffic split, and advanced load balancing, and the Gateway API, primarily known for its north-south traffic capabilities, is evolving to support east-west use cases with the surface meshes. So that is, it can be used to route the communication between services, and the route will attach directly to the service, representing the configuration meant to be a lot applied to any traffic directly to the service. The Gateway API also seamlessly integrated with the custom solutions, enabling the use, uh, enabling the use of the specialized load balancers or service meshes. Several key APIs of the Gateway API graduated to GA October last year, um, including Gateway, Gateway Class, HTTP Route, and other significant resources are under active development and available in the experimental channel. And we are trying, uh, we are planning to raise a gRPC route, gRPC route GA, uh, to GA in the April release. And Richard from my team um, is going to have a gRPC route talk at 2 p.m. Friday. So if you are interested, please join us um, to learn more details about gRPC route. Gateway Enhancement Proposals Gap defines a process for proposing changes to the Gateway API. And it ensures that changes um, will follow a standard process and are discussed in the open and are discussed in the open source community. Um, let's check. Can you help us to check? Thank you. 
Thanks, everyone. That's very, <laughs> that's very warm. Um, so let me start it over. Uh, gateway enhancement proposals defines a process for proposing changes um, to the Gateway API and ensures that the changes um, follow a st standard process and discuss in the open source community. GAP 1619 is a proposal to enrich Gateway API with session persistence um, to ensure that a user's requests are consistently routed to the same backend throughout their interactions with a website or application. It is currently under provisional state, and we are very close to move it to the, into the implementable state, um, which Grant will cover in a few minutes. Discussions about this gap has been very, very intense um, in the past few weeks. As you can see from the screenshot, it has more than 100 comments on the PR, and there were lots of great discussions with a real sense of collaboration and um, excitement about session persistence. And it is so great to see many people actively participating and sharing their ideas. And the most exciting part is the PR was merged a few days ago. So in the next 15 minutes, thank you. So in the next 15 minutes, um, you will get the first hand updates about session persistence. And with that, I'm handing it over to Grant to talk about what session persistence is. All right, thanks, Gina. Um, first, let's talk about what session persistence is. As Gina kind of introduced the topic already, um, let's define the official meaning of session persistence as it pertains to Gateway API. Um, the first thing that we really want to do with uh, a lot of the GEPs in Gateway API is that we want to establish a common language uh, just so we're all talking about the same thing, um, just to make things clear in communication. Um, so what is session persistence? Uh, it's about making sure that when you use a website or an app, your request is going to the same server uh, for a certain duration or a specific amount of time. Um, how can you achieve it? Uh, clients can achieve this by providing identifying information like a cookie, uh, which is used by a load balancer to route traffic to the same server. Um, and uh, you can also think of this as kind of an exception to load balancing. Uh, it bypasses a proxy's load balancing algorithm and goes directly to the backend uh, that it's already previously established this session with. Um, so unfortunately, session persistence is not a standardized name. You guys probably are aware of that. Some people call it sticky sessions. Some people call it session affinity. But um, here we're not trying to, to really enforce some sort of global standard here, but we just really need to, to establish some sort of naming convention or a common language for the foundation of this gap. OK, let's, let's uh, define another term, um, which it might be a little confusing, but uh, hang on. Uh, session affinity. So the best way to define session affinity uh, as it pertains to Gateway API and our APIs uh, is to compare it to uh, session persistence, which we just defined. So as we're defining it here, um, session persistence provides uh, a guaranteed or mostly guarantees uh, backend persistence to the same backend server. Uh, whereas uh, session affinity is, we're calling a weaker form uh, of session persistence. So um, strong versus weak. Next, uh, we are defining such persistence as uh, it's deliberately uh, provided attributes on layer seven. So you can think of like a cookie or a header, whereas uh, just an affinity uh, is based on any existing connection attributes, um, such as like a IP, client IP address. And um, the uh, gap that we're working on in 1619 is defining support for session persistence, but we are leaving out uh, session affinity. Uh, so the idea here is that we, we kind of establish this common language so we could decouple these APIs. Uh, so we can ta tackle session persistence specifically in this gap and leave session affinity for another time. So uh, as you might already know, you, uh, Kubernetes also already supports session affinity. Uh, in the service object, and that's spec.sessionaffinity. But uh, right now, we aren't supporting um, compatibility with that uh, with, with uh, GEP 1619. Uh, might revisit that later, but uh, right now, it, it doesn't support enabling um, our session persistence 
and Kubernetes such an affinity at the same time. So how can you achieve such a persistence? Um, you can do it in multiple ways. Uh, the, the most common way uh, is through a cookie, like I mentioned earlier. The client uses a set cookie HTTP header uh, to uh, response header from, from a uh, gateway or a backend uh, in its feature requests. And the value of this cookie encodes some information about a backend that the load balancer will use to create uh, a consistent uh, session to a specific backend. Next, uh, headers can also be used to achieve such persistence uh, and maybe situations where cookies aren't supported. Uh, here, the client uses a predefined HTTP header provided to the gateway in future HTTP requests. Um, like cookies, headers encode some sort of uh, value which the backend uses to look up um, where the rest requests should be routed to. Uh, lastly, uh, URL encoding, um, they can also be used for session uh, persistence. Uh, the server automatically rewrites the URL to encode the session information. You, you might see this with uh, older Java applications and with specifically with that J session ID um, name. Uh, next, I'll hand it to Gina to talk about uh, how we initiate session persistence. Okay, thanks, Rand. Um, the initiation of the persistence as Persistent session is possible from various sources, from the global load balancer, regional load balancer, internal gateways, sidecars, or any component before reaching the backend. Um, here, I want to show, like, start with a very, very simple example with a gateway and a few backends. And a typical flow of the request and response looks like this. A client sends a request to a gateway which has a route resource attached to it. And based on the route rule, the request is forwarded to the backend one, and then the response is then returned to the gateway and then send it back to the client. And know that um, in this example, backend one does not have session persistence enabled, so the next request can be routed differently. And next, that's like a look, a take a look at how a gateway can initiate a session with cookie, persistent sessions with cookies. With a client send a request, the gateway routes the traffic based on the route rule, and this time the request is sent to backend two, which has a session persistence enabled. And then the gateway includes the set cookie header, SID123, in the response to establish a persistent session. After that, the client can store the cookie and send the following request with the cookie allowing the gateway to decode it and look up the SID and consistently route the request to backend two to form a persistent session. This diagram outlines a very simple use case of a gateway initiating a persistent session by inserting a cookie in the response header and a client application applying the cookie in the headers of the following request. And one thing that I like to call out is, as Grant mentioned earlier, cookie is just one of the mechanisms to implement persistent session. And um, implementations can decide how you want to achieve it. Now let's take a look at another example of how a backend can initiate a persistent session with cookies. Similar to the previous slide, the gateway routes the traffic to backend two, which has session persistence enabled. And this time, the, uh, the backend includes a set, header, set cookie header in the response to establish a persistent session. And then the gateway may modify the cookie with a reference to a specific backend so that it can update the following request. It can route the following request to the same backend. There are several approaches um, for the gateway to achieve it. And in this example, it adds an additional cookie BID to reference the backend ID. So when the client sent the following request with a cookie, the BID in the cookies allows the gateway to consistently route the traffic to backend two. And note that in the gap 1619 does not does not define details about the backend initiated sessions because it can be very, very complicated. So it is intended to explore this um, in, a, in a separate proposal. 
So now we have defined what session persistence is, introduced how to achieve session persistence, and explored a few examples of how it can be initiated. And now let's review how the API looks like. All right, so before we dive into the API that we're working on right now, um, let's review some Gateway API uh, definitions. So meta resources and policy attachments. Um, while designing Gateway API, we found that we often need to change an object's behavior without changing their spec. Uh, that's where meta resources and policy attachments become very useful. Uh, so a meta resource is a class of uh, objects that only augments the behavior of another object uh, by attaching to it. Uh, and then furthermore, a policy attachment is a type of meta resource that uses a specific targeting struct, uh, target ref in the example here, um, and has a defined behavior. It can be a direct or indirect uh, type of policy attachment. Um, uh, here in this example, uh, example TLS policy is a hypothetical uh, direct policy attachment that uh, augments the service to add a CA reference. Sorry, I meant to say inherited, not direct. It's direct or inherited. Um, so uh, a direct policy attachment uh, is a policy uh, that references a single object only and only modifies the fields for that specific configuration object, or that configuration for that specific object, while an inherited policy attachment is a policy that references a single object as well, uh, but it um, can modify the configuration for any child objects of that object that it's modifying, uh, and all, any configuration associated with those child objects. Um, so if you want more information about um, dir uh, direct or inherited pol policy attachments, I recommend reviewing GEP 713. Uh, there's also a, a PR that Nick has up um, that is making some substantial changes to that. So look for uh, a PR related to that. OK, so uh, when trying to design uh, the Session Persistence API, we've, we've found ourselves needing to augment the Kubernetes service object, or more specifically, the traffic bound for the backends. Uh, a new direct policy attachment that we're calling backend LB policy, and LB is for load balancer here, uh, enables us to augment a service without changing the service API. Uh, and there's a delicate balance here on how generic or how specific uh, these new policy attachments that we're designing should be. Uh, having it too specific uh, can lead to uh, lots of CRDs and proliferation in that matter. Uh, but having it too generic can be kind of confusing and lead to monolithic API objects. Uh, for session persistence, we, we currently landed on backend LP policy um, as an abstraction for configuring load balancing configuration for back, uh, back end traffic. So in other words, we, we anticipate that uh, other load balancing related configuration will be added to this uh, API. Uh, for example, load balancing algorithm selection, which is not currently a feature in Gateway API. Um, so that this structure kind of paves the way for that to be included. Uh, attaching session persistence configuration uh, with a backend LB policy to a, to a valid backend enable, enables it for any route that, uh, direct, that is directing traffic to this backend. Uh, and so a, a backend here can be a service, it can be a service import in the case of uh, multi-cluster scenarios, uh, and it also can be any implementation specific backend object reference. Uh, another big note here is that this API is provisional, so we are looking for feedback, and we do expect some things to possibly change. And additionally, um, we also had a desire to add session persistence at a route level, um, because some implementation, implementations may not support it at the service level, and at the same time, it can be quite confusing uh, to attach session persistence at a uh, service level for certain scenarios, such as like traffic splitting, things get quite confusing in that scenario. Um, so the API for this route level configuration exists within the route rule structure, uh, so it's specific to each route rule. Uh, we also plenty to support HTTP route and gRPC route. Uh, these are the layer seven routes we currently have. Uh, currently, it uses the same API fields as back in LP policy. Uh, so what you configure at the service level, you can also configure at the route level. And you might notice we brought up the idea of an inherited policy attachment earlier, but uh, this API design currently isn't one. 
the idea here is that the inline route configuration uh, in the backend LB policy will work together, uh, similar to, to the concept of an inherent policy attachment, but uh, we're able to keep backend LB policy focused on a service. Uh, and Gina will talk more about how these two APIs interact later. Okay, so let's talk about the specific API fields uh, that we currently have. In its current state, we have about six fields um, that you can configure. Uh, keep in mind that this API is provisional, which means it's, it's probably likely to change. So first off, we have the session name variable. So this is a generic configuration uh, for the session name. We've kept this field kind of loosely specified to leave some room for interpretation. Uh, imp implementations may use it to indicate the cookie or header name, uh, depending on what type of session persistence they are using. So next, the uh, type field specifies the type of session persistence. Uh, we currently have cookie or uh, header at the moment. Uh, next, we have a API struct uh, cookie config, which is specific to cookie configuration. And inside that, we have a lifetime type at the moment. Um, this specifies whether a cookie is a permanent or session cookie. And if you're not familiar with uh, what a permanent or session cookie is, um, it's pretty simple. A permanent cookie uses the expires or max age attribute, um, while the, a session uh, cookie expires when a client has chosen to expire that session. Uh, moving on, absolute timeout um, is the, when the lifetime type is uh, permanent, like I mentioned, it's going to be the expires or max age attribute. But when it's a uh, session, uh, it's going to specify the timeout, the absolute timeout as tracked by a different means, probably by the gateway. And then lastly, we have the idle timeout, uh, which makes the session invalid after it's been idle for a specific amount of time. The other big note here is that, uh, it's provisional, and also all fields are optional at the moment. Thanks, Grant, for walking us through um, how session persistence is integrated into the Gateway API. And in the next few slides, I want to go over a few scenarios um, of different configurations and what the expected API behavior looks like. As Grant mentioned earlier, session persistence can be configured with a route rule API. And in this example, we have a HTTP route, and it defines two different route rules with different paths through the bar, and each route rule has its own session persistence configurations. And they are both direct traffic to the same backend. So in this case, do the two route rules referencing the same backend service share one persistent session? The answer is no. Um, each route rule should have its own persistent session, and the persistent session shouldn't be shared between these two different route rules. In scenarios involving uh, traffic split, session persistence impacts load balancing after routing. So when the persistent session is established and traffic split is configured across services, the persistence to one single backend should be maintained across services. As a result, a persistent session takes precedence over weights when selecting a backend. In this example, we have a traffic split configured to evenly distributed traffic to service one and service two. However, persistent sessions should be maintained over the traffic split, uh, traffic split weight. So the request will be routed to the same backend, which handled the previous request, regardless of the weight uh, configuration. Another thing to consider when traffic split is involved, all backend services should have session persistence enabled, and it can be configured with either a raw raw API or attach a backend LB policy to the individual backend services. Remember that session persistence can be applied with different two different APIs. So you can attach uh, either you can either attach a backend LB policy to a service object, or enable it um, with an inline route rule API. In this example, the HTTP route has a route rule session persistence configuration, and it directs the traffic to a backend, which has a backend LB policy attached with a different session persistence configuration. So which configuration should be used um, for the persistent session? 
The answer is the route rule one. Um, because the route rule operates at a higher level, so it overrides the configuration applied to individual backends. And even if a backend has its own policies for session persistence, the inline route rule API can override it. And this is because the route rules has a more global view and responsibility um, for overall traffic routing. With these three examples that I just covered, I hope it gives you a better understanding of how the expected API behavior, and um, it should cover most of the use cases in the gap. We also document um, a few age cases that I don't include it here for the interest of time. If you are interested in learning more details, please refer to the gap 1619, and feedback are welcome. So next, I'm handing over to Grant to talk about the next step. All right, so let's talk about how we move forward with this gap. So right now we're in a provisional state, uh, and our next step is get to get into implementable. Uh, to do this, we need some general consensus on the GEP, which we've mostly achieved, um, but we're still looking for feedback. Um, we have one more to-do item for clarifying behavior between the route rule and back in LB policy API. Uh, optionally, we could go to prototyping before implementable, and this would just simply give implementations a chance to try it out before even going to experimental. Um, and after ex implementable is experimental, uh, which means we need to move the APIs into an experimental release channel. And um, during this time, it's expected that new edge cases will come up, um, as always, and API changes are very much possible. And after experimental is standard, uh, we need lots of feedback from implementations uh, while we're in ex experimental. Um, and we also need performance testing for session persistence uh, to be done as well. Uh, additionally, we want to get some review from the Gamma folks, which are leading the uh, Gate API and service mesh integration, integration effort. So we have some open questions we still need to, to answer about the skip. Um, so one of them is session draining, uh, as well as session draining timeout. This is kind of an area we still need to explore. Uh, next, currently, we, we don't have an API that specifies how to handle existing cookies. And by that, uh, I mean whether a gateway should modify, it should, whether it should insert, or whether it should uh, prefix a cookie. Uh, currently, we just leave it up to the implementations to, to decide this for, for themselves. Uh, next, there might be a risky situation such as conflicting session persistence configurations, um, where adding a status indicator could help, uh, could be helpful to end users to identify this. And the question is, should we leverage a status in these situations? And lastly, like I mentioned in the previous slide, we still have some behavior to define with uh, route level configuration and backend level configuration when they're both defined at the same time. All right, Gina. All right, so that concludes um, our today's discussion on our path to implement session persistence in the Gateway API. And we'd love to get some help and feedback on the current design. And you can find it at the short link at top. And we have a weekly community meetings on Mondays, Gamma meetings on Tuesday, Code Jams on Friday. All contributors are welcome from all backgrounds. And you can join our community Zoom call and send messages on the Stack channel. So we have a few minutes for questions. Uh, oh, we have a question here, and you will be the next one. Okay. Yeah, is there, I think there's a mic. Should be, oh. okay, he's coming. And the first one, yeah, thanks for a great performance. My question is related to the genus part about uh, the priority of uh, the, and the precedence, like when we have several versions of our applications and when the, we have to decide if we apply the policy uh, splitting first or the waiting policy first. Uh, from what I see, uh, we have in our company we use the same strategy that you suggest to use, yeah? But uh, our users, our developers, say us that uh, some, sometimes they need uh, to split the traffic according to the weight, firstly. 
and then apply these uh, affinity or yeah policy but sometimes they need the other way and we <laughs> decided that we should give them the opportunity to configure that in manifests have you considered something like that yeah, th thanks for thanks for the question. This is definitely a good question. Um, as you mentioned, best case scenario, like we have session persistence enabled across all the service backends, um, but it's not necessary to be a hard requirement um, for enabling session persistence, especially during migration, where some services may have session persistence enabled, some may not. So um, we actually had some discussions on this while we are putting together the design. And we came up with three different ideas. And um, we decided to let each implementation to decide what behavior makes sense for their users. Um, we also have the three options documented in the GAP 1619. The first one is um, you can, if you see RCN, like some of the services have this enabled, some are not then you can decide if you want to reject the policy. That's one of the options. The other one, the second one is, you can just apply session persistence to the service object that they configured. Um, but as a result, all the traffic might be um, directing or routed to the same backend, or with, to the backends with the session persistence enabled. And that needs to be carefully handled. So on my team, on the Google side, gRPC route, we actually prefer the third option, which is like we automatically enable session persistence across all the services involving the traffic split. Um, we think that makes sense to make sure like your services are not overloaded. And um, hopefully this may not have any side effects or negative impact to your applications. So like I said, um, this may only happen during the migration cases or uh, migration time frame. So we hope this is a use, uh, this is an age case um, that we can let the user to decide. And um, we also think it might be reasonable to have each, each implementation decide what behavior they would prefer. Okay. Any other question? We have one more question here. Yeah, thank you both. Uh, just a quick question. If I want to, like, you, you mentioned that the HP route backend, uh, HTTP route take precedence on backend policy, right? So if I want to, let's say I have a backend policy, but I want to exempt one route. So is there, like, can I somehow set on HP route level, like, this is false? So then, like, one route is exempted from, from the cookies. So currently, session persistence can be enabled at two different levels. One is using the backend LB policy, applying for the service object. The other option that you have is doing that at the route row level. Um, that should be included in the HTTP route. And we're also thinking about the third option, which is exactly what you mentioned at the route level. Um, but that's sort of like one of the open question or pending item that um, we haven't explored much. Um, but we think there is a possibility there. No, but my understanding it is already available in the route level, right? HTTP route level. HTTP route, uh, but it, that's inside of the route rule. So in the HTTP route uh, spec, there are several uh, yeah, issues. Yeah, yeah. But my, so my question is like, if I have like, let's say I want to slash, I don't know, slash example to be exempted from persistence. So I have a backend policy on my service, my service exports a lot of routes, but one of them is slash example. So I want slash example to only be exempted. So I was wondering if, if this is like something I can do like session persistence false for this route. Oh. Yeah, I, I don't think we currently have a design for that. That's an interesting use case. I think the answer would be to use all route All routes and yeah, like, not just the backup policy, but then like, you know, yeah. if I have, I don't know, like two implementations mm. in the cluster, so then I need, like, I need to do like you know do a lot of uh yeah it's hard it's 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 yeah. it's uh, tedious is that what you're saying yeah yeah, yeah uh, we should uh yeah we can talk after i think that's yeah, an yeah, interesting sure. use case mm -hmm. and maybe document that and see if there's a solution there yeah. no worries yeah thanks for the presentation thanks for bringing this up um i think we are at time we can certainly discuss more offline 
And um, thank you all for your time and um, attention. We'd like to hear your feedback and about session persistence. And you, we can always find our proposal at the show link on the screen. And um, we appreciate if you have a minute, if you have a few minutes, to leave us um, some feedback about this talk. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.